Look, NASA's Artemis plan right now? It's complicated. We're talking SLS rocket, Orion capsule, the gateway station, Starship HLS, plus somewhere around 10 to 15 tanker flights just to fuel one mission. That's a lot of moving parts. Then in November 2025, SpaceX drops a simplified proposal. NASA immediately reopens the contract to competition. Meanwhile, SpaceX has hit 49 critical milestones for HLS, but NASA's safety panel is warning the timeline could be years late. So is simpler actually better? Or is all that complexity NASA's way of managing risk? And what exactly did SpaceX propose that got NASA's attention? Let me break down what's actually going on because it's more nuanced than you'd think. NASA's current plan goes like this. SLS launches Orion with four astronauts heading to the moon. At the same time, Starship HLS launches separately, gets refueled by about 10 tanker flights in Earth orbit, then flies to lunar orbit and waits. When Orion arrives, two astronauts transfer over to Starship, land on the surface for roughly a week, then come back up to rejoin Orion for the ride home. Everything has to sync up perfectly. Now, most coverage misses something important. The original Artemis plan included Gateway as a transfer hub. But NASA cut that back in 2020. Gateway doesn't show up until Artemis 4. So when people talk about bypassing the hub, that was actually NASA's decision, not Elon's brilliant insight. The question is whether SpaceX's new proposal streamlines things even more. The real technical challenge, moving hundreds of tons of cryogenic fuel between two spacecraft in orbit. SpaceX managed to transfer fuel between tanks inside one starship during their third test flight in March 2024. That worked. But ship to ship? Nobody's done that yet. This demo was scheduled for March 2025. Then summer 2025. We're in December 2025 now, and it still hasn't happened. NASA's safety panel met with SpaceX's leadership in September. They came away impressed with the manufacturing side, but they're not sugarcoating the schedule. Their assessment could be years late for 2027. And that matters. Because orbital refueling isn't just one milestone. It's the entire foundation of how SpaceX gets to the moon. Each tanker has to launch fast enough that boil-off doesn't eat up your gains. You could be looking at six months of continuous operations, where one failure kills the whole mission. Think about coordinating 10 to 15 launches, each one carrying fuel that's literally evaporating, all of them needing to dock with a depot, transfer cargo, and do it quick enough to beat the clock. So what did SpaceX actually propose in November? They say it's a simplified architecture with fewer than 10 tanker flights. No detailed specs yet, but cutting down refueling missions means faster timelines, less boil-off, lower risk. That's real if they pull it off. Look, I think we need both perspectives here. SpaceX has made genuine progress. Those 49 milestones aren't PowerPoint slides. The docking adapter has been through over 200 test scenarios at Johnson Space Center with real hardware. Astronauts have tested the elevator in actual Axiom suits. They dropped a full-scale landing leg onto fake moon dirt to see how it handles impact. This is tangible work. The HLS interior is massive, 600 cubic meters, two airlocks, potentially 100 tons of cargo. Compared to Apollo's cramped lander, this is a game-changer for long stays and serious science. But I'm not going to ignore the problems. Starship is still in development. Eleven test flights so far with mixed results. Flight 5 caught the booster with the tower arms, which was genuinely impressive. But right now, Starship is hitting about 50 tons to orbit, not the 100 tons they projected. Unless Block 3 fixes that when it flies in Q1 2026, 
you're looking at double the tanker launches. That six-month timeline could get a lot longer, and the delays aren't all on SpaceX. NASA pushed Artemis III from September 2026 to mid-2027 in December 2024. Why? Orion's heat shield got damaged during Artemis I, and they're still figuring that out. Axiom's behind on the spacesuits. The Government Accountability Office tracked delays across the board. Eight out of 13 major milestones pushed back at least six months. This is a program-wide issue. Then there's politics. Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy said in October 2025, I'll be damned if China beats us to the moon. That pressure pushed NASA to reopen the HLS contract and invite Blue Origin to bid on Artemis III. Blue Origin's already building the Blue Moon Mark II for Artemis V under a $3.4 billion contract. Their approach needs fewer refueling flights but carries less cargo, maybe 20 to 30 tons, versus Starship's 100. Competition is good, though. Two lander providers means we're not dependent on one company, and it pushes both to innovate. Blue Origin takes less technical risk with moderate capability. SpaceX swings for transformational capability with higher risk. It depends what you value more, schedule certainty or infrastructure potential. There's also the budget elephant in the room. Trump's fiscal 2026 budget proposal talks about canceling SLS and Orion after Artemis III because SLS costs $4 billion per launch. If that happens, you need something else for crew. Some proposals say use Crew Dragon to get astronauts to a fueled starship in low Earth orbit. Skip SLS entirely. Dragon handles the crew part with proven tech. Starship does the lunar landing. Could that work? Yeah, technically. Dragon launches crew to LEO, docks with Starship. Astronauts transfer over for the moon trip. After surface work, Starship comes back to Earth orbit, meets Dragon again, and Dragon brings everyone home. The advantage is Dragon stays in its comfort zone, and you're using flight-proven systems for the riskiest part. Re-entry. The downside is you're still betting everything on Starship's deep space performance, and that refueling working flawlessly. But compare that to current Artemis. SLS at $4 billion per shot with limited flight rate. Orion with heat shield issues. Gateway adding complexity early on, Starship needing 10 to 15 tanker runs, delayed spacesuits. Any one of those could push things further right. What gives me hope is the collaboration between NASA and SpaceX. Kent Chonaki, Deputy HLS Program Manager, talked about testing SpaceX's cryo valve. NASA asked for it. SpaceX was like, why do you need our valve? They tested it found improvements, gave feedback. SpaceX made changes. Performance got better. That's how you build reliable systems, even if it's slow. Every Starship test flight feeds data into HLS. The booster catch proved rapid reuse works, critical for high-cadence tanker missions. Re-entry tests improve heat shields. Each Raptor firing improves engine reliability models. But the safety panel also flagged something worth watching. SpaceX's Starlink business needs Starship for satellites. That could create competing priorities with HLS. My honest view, both approaches work depending on priorities. If you want distributed risk with proven systems even at higher cost, NASA's multi-contractor path makes sense. If you want maximum payload, lower costs, and permanent infrastructure, SpaceX's approach works once they prove the tech. Gateway's not getting eliminated. It's strategically delayed until Artemis IV when it actually serves a purpose. Staging point, comms relay, international hub. For Artemis III, direct Orion to Starship docking removes an unnecessary step. Smart planning by NASA. 
SpaceX's November proposal probably banks on better Block 3 performance, smarter refueling, or accepting some limits that cut tanker flights. NASA took it seriously enough to reopen bids and ask Blue Origin for alternatives. That tells you they see value in options while staying committed to getting Americans back safely. The path forward isn't picking extremes. It's using competition to push both companies to their best work, keeping NASA oversight for safety, and being honest about challenges while recognizing real progress. That's how you build something sustainable instead of just a publicity stunt. My take, SpaceX's simplified approach and NASA's distributed strategy both have value. But what we're seeing now is probably smartest. Competition between SpaceX and Blue Origin driving better solutions while NASA keeps safety oversight. That's innovation without recklessness. The delays are frustrating. Absolutely. But I'd rather see them nail orbital refueling, fix the heat shield, thoroughly test everything, then rush it and put crew at risk. We're not just going back. We're building infrastructure to actually stay. What do you think? All in on SpaceX's direct approach or multiple providers for safety? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this helped you cut through the hype and understand what's really happening, hit the like button. Subscribe to New Space Review. We track every Starship and Artemis development with technical depth you won't find elsewhere. Hit that notification bell because this race is moving fast and you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.